Rajya Sabha's 264th session to start today. The Rajya Sabha is likely to see more fireworks from opposition parties in the wake of the Biju Janata Dal's decision to act as an opposition party. President Draupadi Murmu will address the joint session of both the Houses of Parliament at 11 a.m. today. In her address, President Murmu is expected to put forward the priorities of the newly elected government led by Prime Minister Modi in front of the House. Weeks after Sam Petroda resigned at Congress as overseas chairman over his controversial remarks during the poll season, the party has reappointed him to his position. Petroda had resigned from the post in May after his racist remarks on Indians triggered a firestorm drawing sharp reactions from BJP and even his own party, which distanced itself from his comments. Continuing the meeting with leaders of pole-bound states, Congress President Kharge and former party chief Rahul Gandhi met the party's Haryana unit over the upcoming assembly polls in the state. During the meeting at the Congress headquarters, they discussed the party's preparations for the assembly polls. In fact, assembly elections in Haryana are due later this year. No end to the troubles for Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal in the alleged liquor scam. He has been sent to three-day CBI custody after the probe agency arrested him. The CBI had sought his five-day remand. The Ahmadmi Party says CBI's attempt to frame Kejriwal has now been thoroughly exposed. In court, the CBI claimed that Kejriwal told them during questioning that Sisodia formulated the entire excise policy on his own. It has met with a very strong response from Kejriwal. The Delhi CM personally addressed the court and said Sisodia and all AAP leaders are innocent while adding that CBI's only intention is to malign them using the media. The court also sided with Kejriwal, saying nowhere in his statement to CBI does he say that Sisodia alone was behind this alleged scam. In another setback for sexual harassment accused Prajwal Revanna, a court in Bengaluru has turned down his bail petition. Revanna faces serious charges including rape and sexual harassment in multiple cases which are being investigated by an SIT. Labour Ministry seeks report from Tamil Nadu government on charges of discrimination against Foxconn for systematically excluding married women from jobs at its main iPhone plant in Chennai. With reports of Britannia employees at its Taratala factory in Bengal accepting voluntary retirement, West Bengal government denies claims of the company exiting state. Says company fully committed to state, TMC calls report politically motivated. Tamil Nadu's main opposition party, AIADMK, is holding a day-long hunger strike today, demanding a CBI probe into the deaths in the state due to illicit Iraq consumption. They are also protesting against the suspension from the Assembly for the rest of the session. Expressing concern over the high death rate in Mumbai suburban railway system, Bombay High Court comes down heavily, says passengers carried like cattle on locals, reiterates it will hold officers at the highest level accountable. The Bombay High Court will hear a petition challenging the constitutional validity of the Maharashtra government's 10% reservation for the Maratha community in education and government jobs. Petitioners argue that this quota exceeds the reservation cap set by the Supreme Court and violates constitutional equality principles. The court's decision will have significant implications for the state's reservation policies and the Maratha community. Maharashtra's Pune reports first Zika virus case this year. Two cases of Zika virus infection were reported where a 46-year-old daughter, doctor, beg your pardon, and his teenage daughter reportedly tested positive. Following the detection, the Pune Municipal Corporation has urged citizens to follow guidelines and take necessary precautions. With over a thousand cases of dengue reported within the past three weeks, Chief Minister Siddharamaya directs officials to intensify surveillance. Cases also include that of the civic body chief. A 
day after Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde ordered a crackdown against illegal structures, Pune Municipal Corporation has initiated a demolition drive across the city. In the latest, the civic body has demolished an unauthorized structure inside a bar linked to alleged drug use. The police have also filed a case against the bar owners. A woman who defrauded several men in Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand through fake marriages, subsequently absconding with cash and jewellery, has been apprehended and tested HIV positive. The development has alarmed officials in both states who are now searching for the grooms of the serial bride. Biden and former President Donald Trump are set to face off today in the first presidential debate of the cycle as the nation prepares for a rematch of the 2020 race. Biden and Trump are preparing to share a stage for the first time in four years. The president and his predecessor will face off an extraordinary early election debate more than four months before American, Americans vote, that is, on November 5th. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange reunites with his family in Australia. This after he pled guilty to conspiracy in a US court. Australian Prime Minister says he's very pleased with the Assange deal. North Korea has successfully conducted an important test aimed at developing missiles carrying multiple warheads. The missile is a sophisticated weapon coveted by a leader Kim Jong-un to overwhelm missile defences in the continent in the United States. The test was carried out on Wednesday using a first-stage engine equipped with a solid fuel based intermediate and long-range ballistic missile. Unrest in Kenya ends as the Kenyan government has withdrawn the contentious finance bill. President William Ruto says he won't sign into law a finance bill proposing new taxes a day after protesters stormed parliament and several people were shot dead. The government wanted to raise funds to pay off debt. Kenyans said the bill caused economic pain as millions struggled to get by. Israeli forces killed at least 24 Palestinians in three separate airstrikes. Two of the strikes hit schools in Gaza City, killing at least 14 people. Another strike in a house in the beach camp, one of the Gaza Strip's eight historic refugee camps, killed 10 others. The United States, a massive wildfire had charred more than 2,415 acres in central Oregon. A wind-driven wildfire that ignited on Tuesday in central Oregon spread overnight to 2,415 acres. Now the blaze spread quickly through a pine forest and also forced residents to evacuate. A New Jersey cop rescued two people from a burning home, including a disabled person unable to walk. The officer had to drag the man who was in a chair to safety on grass outside. Both were taken to a hospital and expected to fully recover. The officer was briefly treated in a hospital for the effects of smoke inhalation. As the heat wave scorched the US, the six foot tall wax statue of the country, 16th President Abraham Lincoln, outside an elementary school in Washington, D.C., melted over the weekend. The statue, which replicates the Lincoln Memorial, melted as the temperatures soared to 37.7 degrees Celsius in northwest Washington. Country music star Randy Travis appeared Wednesday before a House Judiciary Committee urging lawmakers to pass the American Music Fairness Act. In fact, Travis, a seven-time Grammy Award winner, was unable to sing or speak after suffering a stroke in 2013, was accompanied Wednesday by his wife who testified on his behalf. U.S. First Lady Jill Biden hosts Pride event at the White House where she addressed a crowd gathered on the south lawn of the White House that was decked out in rainbow for a Pride Month celebration. Japan's Emperor Naruhito and Empress Masako started a three-day state visit to Britain. In fact, it marked Japanese couple's second goodwill overseas trip since Emperor Naruhito ascended the throne in May 2019. Initial plans for the visit in 2020 were cancelled due to coronavirus.
South Africa thrash Afghanistan in semis to enter maiden T20 World Cup final. Cameos from Riza Hendricks and Aidan Makram have taken South Africa to a nine-wicket victory over Afghanistan in the semi-final of the T20 World Cup. Now with the win, South Africa has qualified for the final of the T20 World Cup to be played on Saturday in Barbados. Having said that, India is set to take on England in the much-awaited second semi-final. In fact, all eyes on rain gods as a washout would place India in the finals. The winner of the game between India and England later in the evening will join the Proteas to claim the title. When National Geographic approached Anthony Mackerel with an opportunity to swim with sharks to kick off its first Shark Fest programming, it was an easy yes for the Marvel star who is the new Captain America. Mackie has been a certified scuba diver for nearly two decades. He will soon be followed by Discovery Shark Week program. Also hopes to highlight the effects of global climate change on the coastlines of New Orleans where the sea level is rising at an accelerated rate. A Quiet Place prequel premieres in New York. A Quiet Place Day 1 is a spin-off prequel to the 2020 film A Quiet Place Part 2 and continues the acclaimed A Quiet Place franchise. The original film released in 2018 and is directed by renowned American filmmaker, actor John Krasinski. Bill Cobbs, a veteran character actor who amassed almost 200 credits over a five-decade career, including roles in The Bodyguard and Night at the Museum, has died at 90. A Cobb who often played a familiar and memorable everyman likely died of natural causes. Fans of the 90s show have something big to look forward to as the beloved series gears up for its second season. The highly anticipated season 2 is set to premiere today on Netflix. Prabhas and Deepika Padukone starter, epic dystopian sci-fi action film Kalki 2898 AD has hit theatres worldwide today. The film which focuses on the events from the Mahabharata to the Kali Kaliyug is packed with adrenaline rushing action scenes and a gripping narrative.